you don't have a huge tear. You don't have a complete tear in your rotator cuff. Okay. It, it's still more of a partial, at least based on the MRI scan that we did before. Okay. So, you know, this is the shoulder. That's the ball. That's the socket. There's a joint between the collarbone and the shoulder blade above that area. Very commonly, people get some arthritis in that joint, so you start getting these spurs. This bone starts to kind of tilt down, mm -hmm. and then they can put wear and tear on your rotator cuff. So the, normally on an MRI scan, we would see a, just a very solid black line that would be real thick, and then it would blend into this gray muscle here. Okay. And that would be a normal looking rotator cuff, solid black. What happens is when this, uh, you get some abrasion on this side and you get some pressure within the tendon and on this other surface, it's like taking a green stick under your thumbs. It never breaks right underneath your thumb. It breaks on the opposite, on the tension side. And that's where musculoskeletal tissues have their issues is they don't, they respond well to compression. They don't do very well at all under tension. And so you've got some fiber disruption. And what I use it talking with my hands, it's like, the tendon isn't detached from the bone, but there's some tearing within the tendon itself. Okay. And so on your scan, what we see is something that looks like this. Is it the, you know, there's, it's nice and black here, it's nice and black here, but there's kind of a triangular shaped area in this one or two sequences of these. It's not the entire tendon, but mm -hmm. there's just this area of partial tearing that's within the tendon. And so, Underneath that, in the bone, we see bone edema, which is just these little fibers pull out. They leave little holes, and then joint fluid and inflammatory fluid kind of gets down into that area. And you can just see on your MRI scan, there's a brighter area here of your shoulder. So rather than have to take this whole tendon down and repair it with an anchor, which is you know longer procedure, takes time to heal, you'd have to be off work, you couldn't lift. What we usually do is take the pressure off, you know, by getting rid of the bone spurs, getting rid of the arthritis. And then usually I just take a drill and just drill right into that area. And okay. that does two things. One, it stimulates the bone marrow to come out and fill that up and hopefully heal it. And two, a lot of the pain comes from the bone edema itself. And when you put a drill in it, you decompress it. So it allows that build up of, Deep of, of, of yeah. uh, you know, pressure in the bone, which is like the worst pain you can get. Wow. Tendon tears don't hurt that much, but bone edema is just like incredibly painful. Okay. And so that, and that way you wouldn't have to be off work quite as long. Now, when you drill this, do you insert a, a screw or something? I don't think we do... would have to. Okay. That's what I'm saying is that, you know, if you're gonna, if you're gonna repair it, then it's usually best, you know, take the whole thing down, freshen up the edges, burr the bone down. Then we have to use an anchor and strap it down. And that process, I mean, it's four months before the tendon's healed, and it's a year before you're as good as you're gonna be. But with this, we just usually let you go pretty rapidly, have you kind of protect it, but you don't, I mean, you'll be moving your shoulder right away. Okay. And is this daytime surgery or is it? It is, is it? day surgery. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, one of the things I was concerned